Welcome back to our channel. My name is Chris Roberts and this is Roberts Dev Talk. Now, one of the really cool things about the modern .NET ecosystem is the enormous array of really high quality, well-maintained open source packages that you can use in your .NET projects. However, there's so many of these packages and libraries to choose from, sometimes it can be hard to know where to start. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to five essential .NET libraries that you can use to level up your next project. Now, this video is not intended to be a particularly deep dive or a detailed tutorial into these libraries. I have made deeper dive videos, which I'll link down below. This is more of an introduction to whet your appetite and perhaps draw your attention to some projects that are available that perhaps you didn't know about. With that, let's get started. <laughs> Now the first library on our list is LightDB. Now LightDB is a completely serverless, single file based, NoSQL database that you can use in your mobile applications and desktop apps to provide a data store or a configuration store or perhaps a custom application file formats. It has advantages over SQL stores such as SQLite because it is a completely schemaless database. So you can use it to store much more free form and flexible data. It allows you to store C sharp objects directly and it handles the deserialization and serialization for you. It doesn't require a server and it can be installed directly from the command line using NuGet. So in this example, we have a plain C sharp class. Notice we have no special mappings or attributes. We can easily create a connection to our LightDB database and then we can use that connection to get an instance of a collection that stores our type. And now we can directly insert into our collection an instance of this C-sharp class. We can add indexes such as on the ID and on the name. And then later on as needed, we can retrieve items from our data store using the simple to use link style Fluent API. Now notice this uses such things as collections which are similar concepts to MongoDB. So if you ever use MongoDB or come across it in any of your web applications, then you'll feel right at home. I use LightDB in lots of my desktop and mobile app projects as it is incredibly flexible. So it's highly recommended. I'll drop a link down below. Go check out the LightDB project. Now, if you've ever needed to send data over a network or perhaps communicate with uh, Bluetooth devices, you'll know there are situations sometimes where the remote service or the device is unavailable. Maybe it's offline or maybe there's a connection issue on the network. However, building retry logic is fairly boring and also quite tricky to write and debug. And this is where the absolutely excellent Poly library comes in. And Poly contains an extensive toolbox of fault handling policies that allow you to build resilience and transient error handling into your application without having to write a lot of custom logic. Now, for example, imagine you are making a request to a remote API. You want to handle situations when perhaps that API is overloaded or down. So you want to wait and retry after a certain amount of time and resend your request to the API. And you can very easily achieve that in Poly using the wait and retry policy. So in this example, let's create a new policy. We'll handle HTTP exceptions, and then we'll add the wait and retry handler. We can specify how many times you want to retry, and we can also specify the time delay between retries, for example, in this case, using a simple time span. We can add a handler for each time the policy is retried, so we can do things like logging and telemetry. And finally, we can execute the policy. This gives us a policy result object that contains the outcome, whether it's successful or failed, and the final result, whether that's an exception or our expected response. Now, Poly also contains other tools and other retry types such as circuit breakers, timeouts, and caching that you can use to build fault handling and resilience into your application. It's such a useful library that Microsoft has built an official extension for their ASP.NET Core HTTP client factory that uses Poly to handle retries. Check out the link to the Poly project below and give it a try in your next project. You have plenty of choice when it comes to choosing a logging framework for your .NET application. However, the Serilog library really shines because of its enormous flexibility and its simplicity of use. Now, Serilog allows you to send your logs to quite a long list of destinations, such as email, webhooks, and Slack, to logging dashboards like Elmar and Raygun. It allows you to write to file, of course, and console destinations, and it also allows you to write custom logging destinations, which are known as syncs. It allows you to configure independent 
logging levels for each destination. So you can choose to send information messages to one destination and only warning messages to another. And it does all this with minimal changes to your code base because it integrates directly with the .NET iLogger interface and the built-in dependency injection. So for example, if we wanted to configure our .NET application to send verbose logging to the console and write only warnings and errors to file, we can do it very simply using Serilog. First of all, when starting up our application, we create a new logger. We can add the console sync or logging destination using the Fluent API. And on top of this, we can stack the file destination. For the file destination, we set the warning log level. This means that only messages with a severity level of warning and above are written to file. Then we can very simply set our file sync to create a new log file daily. And finally, we can add Serilog to our .NET DI container using the add Serilog method on our service collection. Now all we need to do is use the built-in log methods and Serilog will catch those log messages and route them to the appropriate destination. Now I've made a deep dive video into the Serilog library, which I'll link down below. Check out Serilog for your next .NET application. I guarantee you, you'll never want to use another logging library. If you're building web applications, then sending transactional emails such as password resets, welcome user messages, that kind of thing is quite an important part of most projects. However, if you're using the .NET built-in SMTP library, then the functionality is quite limited, especially if you want to do things like sending HTML templates. For that reason, I like to use the Fluent Email Library, which uses a Fluent API to configure lists of recipients, set message bodies, subjects, HTML and text fallbacks and so on. For sending HTML messages, it supports the Razor templating language, which you'll be familiar with if you've ever used MVC or Razor pages, and also the Liquid template if you've used Shopify templates. For example, you might have a nice HTML template stored for a welcome email for a user and a user information object in a database. You can take that object and you can populate the template using the model binding available with Fluent Email. Fluent Email works really well with the built-in .NET dependency injection, so you can add the Fluent Email sender to your service collection. So you can then request it in your constructors, use the email builder to create a new email, configure the recipient, subject, and then bind your template to a C-sharp model. You can then use Fluent Email to send the email asynchronously. Now, in addition to plain old SMTP, Fluent Email supports SendGrid and MailGun for sending emails and also MailTrap for testing. I've made a deeper dive tutorial into Fluent Email, which I will link down in the description below. Now it's good practice when you're designing your projects to separate out dependencies. So for example, if you have a user view model that looks up a user, abstracting out the database lookup into a user service is a good idea because it allows you to test your user view model on its own independently from database lookup code, which can have its own independent test coverage. Now the problem with this, of course, is that you still need to simulate the information coming out of your user service. So when you're writing unit tests, sometimes this means quite a lot of time wasted writing dummy implementations of your services. And this is where the rather brilliant mock or MOQ framework comes in. For example, in our user view model and user service scenario, what if we wanted to test a situation where our get user method on the user service returns null and make sure the view model doesn't throw an exception? Well, this is really simple to do in mock. All we need to do is create a mock implementation of our user service and we can have mock create a dummy implementation of our get user method, then we can configure this method to return null. We can test to make sure the user view model doesn't throw an exception when consuming this method. We can also include the verify method on the mocked service in our testing to ensure that the get user method is perhaps only called once. Using mock when writing our unit tests is a really good way of saving time and also testing edge cases that perhaps we might not think of or be able to test otherwise. Check out the link to the mock project below and include it in your next set of unit tests. So there were five essential .NET libraries that you can use to level up your next or current .NET project. Question of the day, do you have a favorite .NET library, one that you go to and use in every project? Let us know down in the comments below. And if you've got any questions or if you'd like us to make a deeper tutorials into any of the libraries I've mentioned in today's video, then drop us a comment. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give us a like. And if you like this kind of content, then do make sure you subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss out on a video. And if you want to join us on our developer journey, see the link below. And if you're feeling generous, buy us a coffee. Thank you so much for watching. Happy coding. We'll see you next time.